watching my good fiend, Roger Walker, on Slasher Pepper. Enjoy. <laughs> hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another video. Today is another episode of Talking Horror With, this time with Whopper Horror. How are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for having me here today. For sure. Yeah, I, I know you're a big fan of uh, modern horror movies, so I had to wear one of your favorite, a hoodie from one of your favorite movies, oh, Happy yeah. Death Day. I'm a massive fan of Happy Death Day to you and the first one and just the whole franchise as a whole. I can't wait for the third. I made all that up. <laughs> as a lie. That was all I. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible! <laughs> Looking out the modern horror immediately. This is you went right for the jugular. This interview is this is set up. This is a nightmare. How dare oh, you? Oh yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Well, I knew that would spark something in you. <laughs> oh yeah, it doesn't take much. It's a tiny spark to turn a giant flame in about three seconds. That's about it. <laughs> I'm talking about horror movies. Right. Well, I was asked the first question, which is um, like, who or what got you into horror movies? I guess just, I don't know. I mean, I saw a few as a kid on TV and stuff, but I never watched that many. And my parents were never going to let me watch like hard R or horror or anything like that. So I just watched, you know, things on TV and edited like that. But then when I was 18, I was like, I was going to start watching like horror movies I've never seen before, something like that. And I was going on the internet and try to figure out which movie I would watch. And The Evil Dead was the one. And I was like, I'll watch that. And it was just, you know, the original Evil Dead was just so different than anything I'd ever seen before. It's just so right. ridiculous, low budget, you know. And after that, it just snowballed, and I just kept buying horror movies, and there was no horror community or anything back then. It was just figuring things out on your own internet, and just went from there. <laughs> that was it. Awesome. Yeah, besides The Evil Dead, what, what were some of the other uh, first horror movies you saw? I immediately went straight to Evil Dead 2, of course. I loved it just as much, basically. Then I immediately went to Army of Darkness. <laughs> but, of course, it's way more goofy and comedic, and I was like, I liked it, but I didn't like it near as much. I think then I went to things like an Amer American Werewolf in London, for sure. Dead Alive was definitely one of the first ones I bought because I was just going out and just buying them. I would look online and read what people had said and try to get a feel for what it was, you know, and everything like that. And I'd say, yeah, I might like this one. And I basically just watched all the best horror movies ever, really. <laughs> That's all it was. <laughs> the Return of Living Dead, Day of the Dead, you know, all that stuff, all just once, just back to back. And I was just going to the store and buying, you know, one or two, like every week, it seemed like, for the first couple of years. Awesome. Well, those are all good picks, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it seemed like I, you know, mainly picked good ones, even though I had no idea what I was doing, really. <laughs> not, not for the first couple of months, at least, because I didn't have anybody to really discuss it with, just message boards and stuff. And that was it. Right. <laughs> no, that, was like, that was like 2002. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I'm an old man. I'm ancient. Right. <laughs> <laughs> was that like, um, yeah, I, I've never been to one, but like the, the video rental stores or whatever? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was mostly buying them, though, not even renting. I was just right. buying. <laughs> I really was. I don't know. I rented some, of course, ones that I was like, yeah, it might not be that great. But yeah, rental stores are still going strong then. But I just bought mostly just DVDs right after DVDs. It got big. I just bought DVD after DVD. That was it. This kept happening. Still happening, clearly. Yeah, <laughs> I was just going to say, I can <laughs> still see. Back there. Still going but, strong. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, and um, then what would you say is sort of like, do you have like a number one favorite movie of all time? Yeah, favorite movie of all time is definitely Jaws, which is, it is a horror movie to me. I mean, it is. I don't care. People say it's not. I like it has jump scares. It literally has music telling you to be afraid. It's made, it's made to scare you. The whole film is. It's a horror film. Just because it's well made and well received doesn't mean it's not a horror movie. I don't know what people are trying to say. Like it's a thriller or something. Like, no, it's a horror movie. I promise. I was like, it's got all the tropes, but Jaws is probably my favorite. The Evil Dead, the first one, coincidentally, the first one, the first real horror movie I ever, you know, watched during my little whatever odyssey of watching horror movies is still my favorite one, the Evil Dead, the original. It's just too creative with the camera work and the sound work and how cheap it is. And just, I don't know. And it's just pure and simple. And that's what I want. I don't want nothing else. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I want 30 minutes of setup and then I want an hour straight of nothing but horror. And that's what it is. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Lord. I'm living in a modern age. I hate modern horror and I hate modern technology. It all comes together. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Camera's falling. Well, I would say, um, like maybe you've seen on my account, but my favorite horror movie of all time is Intruder 
from 1989. I watched it two entire days ago. <laughs> oh, wow. Nice. Oh, yeah. Two days ago. I, I've seen it a bunch of times. Yeah. Is it... Oh, yeah. Are you a fan of that one, too, though? Oh, yeah. I love the gore. I love the every... more ridiculous camera work because it's directed by Scott Spiegel, the guy who yeah. wrote that, too, and everything and made movies with Scott. You know, Sam Raimi and Bruce Cameron and all those guys back in the day. So ridiculous camera work, you know, goofy <laughs> characters. And I love seeing Sam Raimi in the movie, Ted Raimi in the movie, Dan Hicks, Dan Hicks in the movie, Mingo that too. Bruce Campbell's in the end, Lawrence Bender, eight name people. But the gore is the, you know, the gore is the star of the show in that one. Yeah. It was Kennedy Effects' first movie actually like together as their first like real company or whatever, where they actually, those three guys came together and made their first real movie together. And they did all the effects. They all, they could tell they went all out with it and everything. And it's some of my favorite effects ever. Just ridiculous, but quick and just, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's... You see it all, but it's fast. That's what I like. Amazing effects in that one. Like, oh, yeah. truly. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, of course, you got like the talking about ridiculous camera work, like POVs from shopping carts. <laughs> oh, yeah. And stuff like that. It's the shot from inside the rotary phone is the most ridiculous to me. In the oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, oh, I'm like, thank you, Scott Spiegel. We really needed that. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. I don't care. I love any ridiculous camera shot. I don't care. Yeah, it's that. That's uh definitely great cinematography. <laughs> and, your uh, favorite slasher movie ever? Sorry. Do you, is, do you think that is your favorite slasher movie ever? Yeah, that's my favorite movie just ever. Oh my god! Ever. Favorite movie ever? Yes. Oh god. Okay. Now I know. Now I know the real deal. Number yeah. one. All right. It's not just Happy Death Day to you. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I was wondering. I was afraid. I was scared. I was terrified all at the same time. Well, I, I must admit, <laughs> I won this for free. Like Universal, okay. like the Dutch Universal Instagram account was like, comment a baby emoji and a knife emoji and get a chance to win Happy Death Day on Blu-ray and a hoodie. So I did. And then, you know, a few days later, I, I won this shit. I haven't even seen the movie yet, to be honest. <laughs> You're the biggest fan ever. Don't lie. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, came, it came with the movie when you bought it from the store, full price. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I, I also love the fact that uh, Bruce Campbell is a cop at the end because that kind of, uh, you know, maniac cop, which he was in earlier. Yeah. What do you think? He almost looks exactly the same. Yes. <laughs> maniac cop and Intruder. It's almost the exact same time. Intruder was, Intruder is the last great slasher movie of the 80s to me, for sure. I mean, it came out in 89, of course, so. But still, I'm trying to, I mean, ugh, slasher movies, they died after that until Scream. And then they died again real quick after that. But <laughs> <laughs> still, still, it was the last gasp of 80 slashers, Intruder. It was like, it was something. It was better than any other slasher from 88 either, probably. I can think of everything. Late 80s slashers are so cheesy and goofy that, I mean, I like them, but it's just a whole nother thing from the early 80s, really. Right, yeah. Yeah, I think there's like a clear time period between everything. I was... Yeah, um, I always found um, Frankenhooker to be kind of weird because that came out in like the early 90s, like 90, 1990. So 90. But it feels like such an 80s movie still. Oh, yeah. You can tell, yeah, it was leftover for sure. Frank yeah. I'm, sure I'm sure Frank Hennelotter's mind was still definitely stuck in the 80s when he made yes. that movie. He, he sure. could have made it in 95. It wouldn't have mattered. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a good one too, though. Oh, yeah. I love Frankenhooker for sure. It's somewhere over here. Oh yeah, it's that oh, along one. with Happy Death Day and the sequel. Limited edition. I said over here along with Happy Death Day and Happy Death Day to you the limited editions over here. 4K. <laughs> I made all that up also. That's a lie. I don't have <laughs> yeah, that would have been a, a surprise. Oh yeah, I just turned the camera over there. Oh Jesus Christ. As soon as you see it, I was like, yeah, turn the camera back as fast as I can. He didn't see that. I <laughs> like of the of the big four. Um as they would like to call them, uh, Friday the 13th, Nine Elm Street, Halloween, and uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Which one would you say uh, is your favorite in terms of franchise? And of the killers, which one is your favorite killer? I mean, the killer is kind of obvious, probably. It's both. Both killer and franchise, Friday the 13th, for sure. Hell yeah. Absolutely. But when you said Big Four, my brain immediately went to uh, the Big Four thrash bands, Metallica Slayer. Yes. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, they're going straight in the metal. I was like, how do you know I like metal music? How do you know? You know all the secrets. But yeah, Friday the 13th, for sure. The movies, the killer, everything, for sure. I like 
certain movies out of every franchise, but I like almost every Friday Thirteenth, not all of them. <laughs> I hate a couple of them, of course. But all right, yeah, which, all the which ones do you hate then? I definitely hate the remake. I mean, there's no way around that. I just hate everything about it. I hate the dialogue. I hate every shot. I hate every character. I hate everyone in the movie. I hate, <laughs> <laughs> I hate Jason X. I mean, Derek Mears, he did a good job as Jason, but the direction of, you know, he was told what to do, obviously. And I, just, I hate the taking of a hostage. I just hate everything in that movie. Everything in the movie annoys me. Jason X is, I almost hate it. It's so stupid. I can't truly hate it, but uh, God, ugh. <laughs> But still, I guess, I, you know, I kind of want to hate Jason Goes to Hell, but I, I got the mask. I guess I can't hate it too much. I don't know. It's something, though. It, it's a nightmare. <laughs> the real love-hate relationship with Jason Goes to Hell, for sure. But I pretty much like one through eight. I love one through six, for sure. No yeah. question about it, for sure. One through six, I absolutely love. Favorite, of course, is three and four, always. Oh, yeah, those are, those, um, most of the time get most praise, I would say. Yeah, I don't know. They're the most pure or something, for sure. I like well, the look, I, the and those two and everything. I must be honest. I really, I love all of them. Um, the remake, I'm not so fond of myself. I, I think I've only seen it once, like, or two times, maybe. Um, no. But it's just not rewatchable for me, really. No. Uh, but, like, one to Jason X and, and also Freddy versus Jason, you know, all oh, of those, I could watch those any day. Like they're so oh, yeah. insane, like all of them. Freddy versus Jason is a bad movie, but I love it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it knew exactly what it was doing. And it just did it. It didn't matter. That's another story. But the remake, you know. <laughs> I just don't like that. I can't, I've watched the remake three times. I love to watch movies. I hate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I can, that's why I can hate them even more. It's so like, I can hate them with more, uh, I don't know what the word is, but uh, just more pinpointed hatred. <laughs> I thought I'd be able to vocalize my hatred better with a better knowledge of the film. There you go. Right. <laughs> I got every Chainsaw Massacre movie. I hate half of them, but I still have them anyway. Doesn't matter. Terrible. I'm a terrible human being. Well, what about the the Texas Chainsaw Massacre? like 2003 you make and the uh, prequel, like the beginning? Uh, I mean, I do like the remake all right. I like the prequel about the same i'd give both of them a, I don't know, six out of ten five out of ten i like them okay for remakes they're not bad that's for sure i mean in the grand scheme of things compared to other remakes they're not bad especially not the 2003 nice no, not i mean it's not really my kind of movie i like it all right though i liked it pretty good in 2003 but it got so hyped up when i saw it in the theater in 2003 they acted like it was going to be this huge return to, to gore and this huge return to hardcore <laughs> horror. that's all they kept saying and everything, I get to the theater and I had to get my ID, my, my license, my ID checked three times to make sure I was old enough to get into this R-rated movie. I was like, they are building this up like this is going to be the most ridiculous thing ever. And I watched it and you see a guy's leg get cut off for less than a second. You kind of see a hook got going to guy's back. You almost don't see anything. <laughs> you yeah. see a lot of people's arm get cut off, but it's dark and you can't... Yeah. You know, but I watched it. And I was like, it was okay, but they really built this up into some kind of gory nightmare movie return to old school horror that it just, <laughs> of course it wasn't. It couldn't have been. It was rated R in the theater in 2003. But, you oh, know, you're, you're, you might not know, but notice, but I like to ramble. About yes. <laughs> I start talking and I was like, oh, let me just tell the whole story about this movie. I got too much uh, worthless horror knowledge in my brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's perfect to get it out. Like, in Oh, yeah, I never do this. I never do interviews or anything. It never happens. I just talk to myself on my phone all the time and just, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I talk to somebody else. It never happens. And I start talking. I'm like, I need to stop talking. Bad. Right. <laughs> the point of this isn't to talk. Oh, wait, it is. Damn it, I forgot. <laughs> or what about the, um, the Leprechaun franchise? <laughs> I don't technically like any of them. I mean, <laughs> even the original, I barely can watch it. I have the only one I even own anymore is Leprechaun Returns, the newest one. I bought it for like nine dollars when it came out. I watched it, I was like, that was barely passable. <laughs> but no, I'm not a fan of the Leprechaun franchise. No, not a big fan at all. Man, I watched all of them. Like, I did a series with a friend of mine, and I watched all of them every single other week. <laughs> <laughs> like, we started with the first one. Two weeks yeah. later, second one. Two weeks later, yeah. third one. 
But did you see Leprechaun Origins? Because that's a movie I really, really hate. <laughs> I literally hated it. Don't worry. I hate. I hated every second of it. I wait. Yes. No, I like the kill where the axe went in the guy's hand and it split it wide open. Oh yes, that was cool. Effect, but that was it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Literally every second, every choice made, everything in that movie. Yes, I hate. <laughs> yeah. It's so bland, so mediocre, so nothing to do with the franchise. So ugh. no, yeah, that's <laughs> my kind of movie. No. Yeah, I'm I'm like completely different when I just don't like a movie. Usually I ignore it instead of like bashing on it like you usually do. Yeah, it only matters for something like that. Like Leprechaun is like it's a big name and everybody's gonna watch it and everybody's gonna and then I'll have I gotta go watch it now just so I can see. Yeah, so I just gotta do it. Yeah, but yeah. Leprechaun Origins, I yeah. I hated that movie too. That was like, just a cash grab, just uh, yeah, one hundred percent. I mean, it barely had anything to do with Leprechaun, like the creature. Yeah. Uh, I hate everything. <laughs> it's like, why did you even call this Leprechaun? Why did you make this the the Wrestling Federation WWE? Oh, made yeah. it, produced it. They said one of the the small wrestlers was playing the Leprechaun in the suit. You watch the movie. I was like, that is not him. <laughs> Number one, you're lying. Number two, you don't even see its legs or its bottom half. I like it could, it's literally it could be anything. It could be yeah. anyone. I was like, this this whole movie is just a sham. <laughs> yeah, the whole the- so the worst not. part is that, like, they um, in the beginning, they try to hide the creature, you know, by doing POVs, like a warmth, like predator ripoff. But then the uh, creature is revealed, <laughs> and you're just, you know, like with Alien or something, the creature is revealed, and then you can just continue to see it. But in yeah. Leprechaun Origins, you get one shot of the creature, and then they just go back to POVs hiding the creature. <laughs> They're like, you know what? We can probably pull some more suspense out of this stupid little creature we have, even though they've already seen it. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yes. Like, no, you cannot. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute joke. I hate. Uh, I hate that whole film. Big surprise. I hate a million movies, but still. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh, no, never again. So, like, there are a lot of movies that you uh, don't feel so fond about, as we can already uh, tell by these first fifteen minutes. <laughs> that's terrible. I know. Yes, <laughs> I didn't speak my mind, and I love to pick movies apart. I, just, I don't know who I love. I love talking about movies and watching movies. I just, if I don't like one, I say I don't like it, but I always say why I don't though. I always explain why and everything. <laughs> I always explain why I hate the film, and I don't just say I hate it for no reason. No, I can I can tell you why. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just too honest. <laughs> so right. <laughs> people just don't want to hear you trash the movies they like, no matter what. They can't help it. It doesn't matter. They oh don't yeah, it. no, but I. I don't agree with that either, though. Like, if you would say intruder is shit, like, I would be curious. Like, why do you think it's shit? Like, it's my favorite okay. movie. We could have, a, like, a debate going on. But nowadays, people just want to cancel you right away when you don't. I got to get rid of this person. I don't want to hear them anymore. <laughs> yes. Done with them. But, like, what would you say? Like, for me, it's Leprechaun Origins. Like, we already covered that one. What is, like, the movie that you just hate the most? Like... Oh, man, I mean, off the top of my head, I know I hate Hellraiser four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> real, really, uh, I hate those movies. Everywhere, I literally hate them. That's for sure. <laughs> I love that I can look behind me and try to find a movie that I hate. What's the movie that I've paid for that I hate? <laughs> <laughs> Not many, I guess. I've got real a bunch of them. Uh, movies I hate off the top of my head. I can't believe that I'm having so much trouble coming up with something. <laughs> I don't know. I hate, I mean, well, when you talk about modern horror movies, I mean, of course I hate almost all of them. <laughs> but Annabelle, uh, Annabelle Comes Home, uh, Ouija, Ouija, Origin of Evil, uh, Truth or Dare, uh, Slender Man, uh, The Bye Bye Man, uh, Insidious 3, Insidious 4. Uh, <laughs> There's a million of them. I don't know. There's too many. Uh, it Chapter 2. Uh, <laughs> terrible. I'm sorry, I had to say that one. <laughs> well, I haven't seen that one yet, but I I hated the first um, Ed remake, like the 2017 one. Yeah, I, I liked some of the acting and some of the kids scenes, but I, I did not like the movie. I didn't like any. I did not like Bill Skarsgård as Pennywise. It, <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> this was not for me. It's way too much CGI. It was a jump scare. Yes, yes. yes. I was gonna mention because sure. like there's one scene that I just hate. And I keep like saying this to a friend of mine who's like a huge Pennywise fan and it fan of the remake. Like there's a scene 
where they've CGI'd a red balloon, which is just like, you can get a red balloon for like, you can get a hundred red balloons for $1 in the store, but they decided to put CGI. When they have the ability to be lazy, they're like, you know, we could just do this. They're going to do that. Yes. <laughs> they're going to pick the quick, easy way because all they're trying to do is make money and they have no time to go do it. No, no, it's not like, it's not like the old days anymore. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, read the balloon. There it is. Stick it in the film. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> they're not worried about that anymore. Terrible. So, um, you were talking about truth or dare. Well, that's the, that's the Blumhouse one, but um, Tim Ritter also did a truth or dare. What do you think of that one? <laughs> it's, it's right behind me. Uh, it's, it's something. It's one of those uh, absolutely horrible movies that I still love for some reason. Uh, I don't know. It is horrible, but mostly because, I mean, my God, he made it with nothing. Yes. <laughs> made it with nothing and no one in Florida back in the 80s shot on video, but still. I love Killing Spree. That's my favorite Tim Ritter movie by oh, far. Oh, yeah. That, that was, that's my favorite, too. It's so good. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. It's all what? Ridiculous, fun, and gore. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's it. And Truth or Dare tries to be a little bit more serious while still being absolutely ridiculous, but takes itself the tiniest amount more seriously than Killing Spree does. I don't know. So I like Killing Spree a little better. But, oh, yeah, I know about Tim Ritter. Somehow. I know nobody else knows about Tim Ritter. Sorry, but I do know who he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, uh, nobody, nobody talks to me about Tim Ritter, about Tim Ritter too much. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's currently making a movie called Sharks of the Corn or something. Oh, I my saw, God. Like, I thought he was on Instagram one day. I saw it. Yeah. Re like, amazing poster, though. Like, artwork of, like, a corn. And there's a Ooh. shark jumping over it. <laughs> oh, my God. Jumping he's to a helicopter or something, I think. Of course, you gotta push it as far as possible. Yes, <laughs> I need more Tim Ritter movies. T 2021 Tim Ritter movies, something I never thought we'd be getting, but I guess it's gonna happen. <laughs> this is what the audience wants to hear, they want to hear about Tim Ritter movies. Yes, yes, I, I bet Everybody no one knows it. about him who's watching now. <laughs> I don't know, no one. <laughs> we're, the only, we're the only two people on the planet even thinking about tim ritter right now i promise <laughs> <laughs> Look, this right. is it gotta be oh yeah but um yeah we mentioned the big four in metal uh earlier you're oh, yeah. a big metal fan too right i guess pretty much kind of <laughs> 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 not the biggest expert even though I've been listening to it forever since I was like 11 years old and I'm ancient, I'm 36 years old for Christ's sake. <laughs> so I've been listening to them for 25 years, but still, oh, I don't even want to pick my favorite out of those four. I know it's not Anthrax, <laughs> but <laughs> it's definitely not Anthrax. It's, I don't know if I can pick Slayer over Metallica or not. I love Slayer's speed and just everything about them and their energy, but Metallica's just songwriting and stuff, especially from back in the 80s and stuff. I don't care about any, anything <laughs> other than the 80s, basically. I like some Slayer stuff after the 80s, but mostly 90s Metallica and after eh, it's all right. But God, I guess I'll pick Slayer, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was a nightmare. I would probably pick Slayer too. I'm... I just have, have to. Yeah. Well, um, I'm, uh, what do you think of the, I, I saw your reply to the story, uh, when I asked for like the thoughts on, um, the Abolos in Musica or whatever, like the nineties oh. album. Yeah. Um, you're not a no, fan I'm, of that one. <laughs> I'm not a fan of that one at all. No, I went back and re-listened to it a few months ago and I just, I mean, it's not like the worst thing I've ever heard or anything. But still, I'm just like, I don't want to listen to it ever again. <laughs> right. It's my least favorite CD by them, even till now. Even though I don't really like their newest, newest, absolutely newest stuff at all. But it is all right. But nah. I don't yeah, like what that. What about uh, God Ates Us All? I do like that one all right. I, I yeah, know I do. <laughs> because it's so ridiculous. Yeah, I love and that one. I, it's a good one. I'm a screaming at the top of his lungs the entire CD. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, God. You can tell I'm old. I said CD. Oh, my God. <laughs> Compact disc. It's over. <laughs> yeah, I love uh, I love the CD time period, though. Like the early 2000s. Oh, like, yeah. That, that was my heyday. That was it. Yeah. The, like you have uh, the, the movie we discussed earlier, like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake. It had like a soundtrack. 
Oh yeah, back yeah. then. That's when soundtracks, everybody was so into horror movie soundtracks from like 2001 to like 2004. Yes. 2005. I don't know why it happened, but it did. Especially the Freddy vs. Jason soundtrack. I don't know why. That sold an insane amount of copies for a movie soundtrack. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I, I love now. those. I know. I mean, people still talking about it now. I'm like, I don't know what it was about the early 2000 horror movies. I don't know. The, all the soundtracks, everybody went crazy over them. It was just, <laughs> it was just Deftones, Deftones, Lamb of God, Deftones. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pretty much. Spine Shank, Disturbed, you know. Pantera. Oh, yeah. Pantera would sneak on us on. I don't know what all. They were on one of the Crow soundtracks I remember from the 90s. I don't even know. Dracula no. 2000. <laughs> Odd. I haven't seen that probably since 2001. I don't even know. <laughs> I don't even know. That is not a movie for me. <laughs> oh, I love it, man. It's oh, I don't I don't like almost any horror movies from like nineteen ninety seven to like two thousand one. <laughs> <laughs> well it's I love it because it's um it's like a product of its time, you know? And oh, yeah. like I was born only in two thousand and three, so I never got to experience like this time period with like virgin records everywhere and uh oh, yeah. scream coming out and that being a craze. So that's why for me it's just so much fun to see that like i was never there so it's this is the only way to reimagine yeah a whole other story like to me yeah i was born in 84 so <laughs> yeah 2000 i was already 16 in 2000 so yeah i was yeah, right exactly there, right there at the middle you know i had a huge cd booklet you know this thick with eight billion cds in it <laughs> but everybody had everybody had it in their car sitting next to them just a huge suitcase yes of CDs. <laughs> everybody but that's just how it was i just didn't know that's all anybody cared about <laughs> right. and the texas chainsaw massacre remake that that uh, soundtrack all those movies i can't remember what else the valentine soundtrack i just watched it yesterday even though i don't like the movie hardly at all oh yeah i watched that i must have watched that a year ago and i i don't remember anything from it <laughs> it's a soap opera pretending to be a horror movie it's it's not a horror movie at all it's not scary it is not gory nothing it's just like a bunch of women just fighting <laughs> just fighting and fighting it's a whole movie and then it just right. ends. I, was, I was like this movie people i like it so good like, this is just so cookie cutter and just ugh. <laughs> it's rated r but i have no idea why i was like there's no reason for it to be rated r they get it in pg-13 uh, easily and right but no, that's enough about Valentine. <laughs> <laughs> I got off on another tangent somehow. Oh, did it? Did it have uh, a soundtrack too, though? Like I, oh, yeah. uh, I heard Disturbed. I heard, like I said, <laughs> Death Tones. I heard Disturbed on there. I heard Marilyn, Marilyn Manson. I heard, oh god, I can't remember. All just the same, the same fifteen twenty. That's on all those soundtracks from that time period for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Who else then there are all, like these really random bands that like yeah. that you'll never hear about two years ago at this point and <laughs> like uh there's songs that don't soundtrack from bands that i've never heard of again <laughs> yes. never i'm like how did you get on that soundtrack i don't know but they were there now everybody remembers you only for that and they disappear who knows yeah. i don't know yeah even but it's so weird to me like the, that metal soundtracks were connected to horror movies you know nowadays it, that would never happen exactly like just think uh, about that now just think about that happening now people would be like what is this <laughs> yeah they'd be like no we're not listening to this but back then it's like nobody i don't know i don't know what the difference is i really don't know why then it was accepted and now it would be seen i know it would be seen as like what are they doing yeah I like um i'm a big fan of the 2004 punisher movie I, I don't think I've ever even seen it. I know about it, and I know it's the one with Thomas Jane. It has to be. Yeah, right? yeah, it's it's really fun. I've never seen it, but I know all about it. I'm there. <laughs> like uh, when the when the credits start, like at the end of the movie, you just hear uh, Drowning Pool step up, okay. and it like starts with a scream, and it's like how that would never happen. Can you imagine Avengers Endgame, <laughs> like having right. credits with like I don't know slayer playing or something <laughs> it's like the end of the dawn of the dead remake is <laughs> disturbed uh just starts playing down with the sickness or whatever i'm like my god i'm like how is this happening and that movie made like 80 million dollars yes. <laughs> something that would never happen now a movie that would make that much money at the end it's like oh now we got a new metal song <laughs> <laughs> it was just a different time i don't know it was i'm telling you what it was all there is to it, it was it was 9 11 is what happened 9 11 happened you know when the twin towers went down and after that 
horror movies got way more dark. I'm telling you, it happened. It, it affected horror movies. It affected films in general. It really did. But that's when horror, metal music started being in it too. It was all of a sudden horror movies are dark again. You know, the House of Thousand Corpses, Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake, Dawn of the Dead remake. All of a sudden, there's you know, there these movies are trying to be like more old school and dark. And all of a sudden, there's metal music. And I really do think it was the effect of 9/11 just on society in general and it's the same way that Vietnam affected movies and horror movies, the exact same way. That is when horror movies and movies after Vietnam, the early 70s and on, movies just got way more real, way more personal, dark. It just, I don't know, it affects films in a way that I think it just makes things way better because people just explore way more than they would have before. And here I am rambling again, but <laughs> still, yeah, well, I really it's... think that's true. I really think it's true on both ends. It, I mean, a bunch of people have talked about it, I'm sure, but yeah it's, it really did affect movies i and well, uh like everyone seems to be confused when we talk about that like how that even happened like metal music in horror soundtracks but um this is a really good standpoint and i i honestly think that's that might be true but that's uh that's definitely an interesting it's standpoint definitely part of it. it's definitely true with horror movies i can i can promise you this that's what it's like thing of vietnam it really is just movies yeah. in general, pop culture, and uh, we just, uh, I don't know, when something like that happens and it's just in your face all the time, it affects everything. It affects movies, pop culture, I don't know. And then after it died down, our movies, like Paranormal Activity started coming out, and then movies just all of a sudden they weren't gory anymore, you notice, in a theater. I was like, well, uh, you could just tell they like died off after a few years. After about 2008 or so, you could just tell, and we've never went back to it. Movies in a the theater aren't gory, and so they are, but they're not. It's not like then. Now it's way more paranormal or just remakes. I don't know, but it just—you can tell—it just went away. We just lost it. I don't know. Right. Was- <laughs> well, who knows what will happen after this whole COVID thing with <laughs> horror movies? There's no telling. I don't know. You can tell they can hardly make movies right now, and they're just not interested in it. But yeah, once it's over, there's no telling. I don't know what they're gonna do. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> I can't see horror ever coming back to being what I want it to be because movies aren't made for me anymore. <laughs> I'm too old. They are not making these movies for me. They're making these movies for 15, 16, 17-year-olds. They're just not for me. <laughs> I can't. That's just all there is to it. That's my answer to everybody now. They're like, why do you hate so many modern movies? Like, because they're not made for me. And it's the truth. They're just not made for somebody my age or my viewpoint. This is not. I was like, so I just keep watching old ones. I'm fine. There's plenty of old ones I still haven't seen. <laughs> right, exactly. There's tons of them. I've seen a million, but there's a million more. It isn't. <laughs> they never end somehow. I don't know. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, like the the new Halloween film. What do you think of that one? The I 2000- thought it was okay, but I, I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, uh, the writing is uh, <laughs> a few times. I was just like, this really should have been rewritten one more time. The whole movie should have been went through one more rewrite. <laughs> Maybe. I, I think I own it. I think I do own it. I, I think I gave it a 5 out of 10 whenever I watched it. It's all right. I like some of the camera work and the sound and the music, but the story and uh, it's not enough for me to care about. I was like, I just don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just not that excited about Halloween Kills, of course. I wasn't excited about that. I mean, I don't get excited about horror movies anymore. <laughs> I passed it. I'm past getting excited over new horror movies, that is. Old ones, an old piece of garbage that was shot on video in 1981. <laughs> Who knows? Tim Ritter's Creep. I got, I got excited over that. Oh, man. Real- Did you see it yet? Oh, yeah. <laughs> man, I still need to watch it. I still need to watch that one. I heard, okay. like, a, I, I interviewed Tim, like, almost a year ago now. And he was oh, talking yeah. about like uh, the opening of Creep. Apparently, he did uh, he did like an opening with a car crash sound effect, and then they just got a a, a car somewhere, <laughs> and they just okay. put it on the road. Like, <laughs> okay, I've only seen it one time, but yeah, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I just bought that DVD. What was that? Like four months ago. I was like, Creep from the '90s by Tim Ritter. I have to have this. And oh, it was exactly what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God! All the sleaziness and '90s shot on video greatness you could ever want. Yeah, <laughs> somebody else. Yeah, somebody else. Somebody else that one so like, this is a piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, it's great. Don't lie to me. <laughs> and to go uh, to go back to some more metal, like, um, what would you say? Like, you already 
picked Slayer from the big four, but what would you say is like your favorite band? Or do you even have one? Pantera overall by far has been forever and ever. <laughs> Pantera's been my favorite band since like 1997. <laughs> So when I was like 13, so yeah, Pantera is my favorite band forever and ever, and somehow they still are. I don't know how. But I mean, mostly because they've disbanded in 2003 or whatever, so they never made any more CDs that I could hate, I guess. <laughs> I'm stuck with, the, stuck with those five from back then. And of course, the really good ones from the 80s, all their hair metal <laughs> songs. <laughs> oh, God. But yeah, Pantera is my favorite metal band and favorite band period, literally, since 97. So a really long time. <laughs> Yeah, I uh I never really got into them too much. Like I'm I'm one of those people that knows Walk. <laughs> oh god, yeah, yeah, no. And no, and I mean, yeah, well, I mean, I um I know the song that's on the Dracula 2000 soundtrack. Oh my god. And I don't this. And the song that's that opens up the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake soundtrack. Pantera's uh, on there? No, I don't think so. Are they? Yeah, Immortally Insane is like the song that uh, oh, opens the soundtrack. God. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That weird, like, cover song. I don't know. <laughs> is that a cover? God, I that in forever. Immortally Insane. I haven't heard that song since, like, 2005, probably. Oh, man, I, I love that song, dude. It's... I don't even know that. <laughs> I, mean, I like everything Pantera ever did. The last CD, it's okay. Reinventing the Still was okay, but the other four, Cowboys from Hell, Oh my God! Full display power, far beyond driven, and the Great Southern Trend Kill. I absolutely love every song on all four of those CDs. I'm a sick man. Uh, sick a uh, Cemetery Gates is also a good one, though. Oh yeah, I love Cemetery Gates. But yeah, also it's just I like Pantera. Same thing with I love all '80s Slayer. I love all '80s Metallica for sure. It's just you know everybody's like you like the most cliche ones ever. I'm like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, like, what's your favorite death metal band? I'm like. Cannibal Corpse. So like that's the most cliche one. I was like, it's the best one. I was like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I don't know. Well, yeah, in, in that aspect, like the I feel like the horror community and the metal community is so like different. Oh, like yeah. um with horror, it seems like everyone just likes the big horror movies, you know? Yeah. Whereas if if the horror community was the same as the metal community, um you and I, we would, we would, you know, call people out for not knowing Tim Ritter. We would call them oh, yeah. for not liking the obscure stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I feel oh, like. Yeah. Just, you got to make it a competition. All right. Yeah. <laughs> you got to like the most obscure thing out there. Yeah. And if you yeah. like Metallica, you're the worst. I'm like, people love to make fun of me because I like Metallica. I'm like, <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> I was like, Metallica was great in the 80s. I was like, what are you trying to say? I was like, you can't change my mind. I was like, it's not even an opinion. <laughs> I was like, they were great in the 80s. You know what I'm saying? There's no way around it. No. Nah. No. Nah. I, I was like, I play bass. You don't. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> Just say that to anyone who doesn't play an instrument. I'm like, I do. You don't. No. Nah. It's like, your opinion doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, you a man. Well, um, what about uh, Motorhead? That's like my favorite band of all. I like them all right, but I never, I never listen to them. But I like them all right. It never happens. I just listen, I'm always listening to Slayer and Panther. <laughs> right. Like, you just have but the like same more modern shit stuff. on more repeat. But what? You just have the same shit on repeat every time. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, but more, more modern stuff now. I listen to Dance Gap and Dance and Issues and just all kind of stuff every time i die it's probably my favorite band now and has been for a while you know favorite isn't like band still going <laughs> right like Holly murder every time i die stuff like that casey a strain uh, i don't know i probably listen to like seven new bands right? <laughs> new i say new they're like 15 years old yes <laughs> terrible they're brand new what about slipknot then uh, i love slipknot back in the day for sure i remember i loved the uh, what they have? They had the EP I loved. I loved the uh, self-titled. I loved Iowa. I loved some little Mert verses, most of it. After that, uh, I kind of fell off. So not, they're okay now, but they're just too radio sounding. <laughs> right. <laughs> too straightforward. I, I like their way more when it was really raw and just, you know, he would really start screaming and crying at the same time during a song. I like stuff more like that. <laughs> I like raw. I don't like real. I don't like overproduced stuff like that. I like I, don't know, I like hearing every instrument, how it really sounds, and stuff like that. I like the older CDs for sure. Man, maybe maybe you would like. Uh, I don't know if you know them, Cancer Slug. 
I've heard of them, but I've never heard of them in my life. I've never heard their actual music before. Oh man, you should you should check those guys out. Oh god, like this, that? Oh. the singer loves like first takes. Even mm -hmm. if he has like a voice crack, they would still just release <laughs> it. <laughs> He's like, "This is the time." Yes. <laughs> oh god, I'm gonna die. Yeah. Went too far. Now yeah, I have well, to listen. Well, Look later. So that's really raw. Maybe you maybe you would right. enjoy that. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna have to listen to it now at some point for sure. Uh, it's uh, it's kind of like the Misfits, but um, mm -hmm. I guess a bit more gruesome. Maybe you can compare it to like Cannibal Corpse in terms of uh, like what the songs are about. Misfits <laughs> and stuff. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thank God, I'm prepared for Cancer Slug. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, is there anything uh, you would like to add to the Talking Horror with episode? Let's see. I don't know. I don't know, 70s and 80s horror forever. <laughs> really, <you know? laughs> Pretty much my whole message. I don't know. 70s and 80s horror. That's where it's at. I don't know. 70s and 80s movies, period, really. I don't know. Sorry to it. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> That's it. Well, I will agree that the 70s and 80s were the best time, but uh well, I, I still think some modern horror movies and are still well, pretty good. I mean, look what I'm wearing here. <laughs> I do like I do love Hereditary. It, I do. It's here. Oh wow! 2018. It is modern. <laughs> Damn. Midsommar. Uh, I love the camera work and it sounded great and looked great, but I didn't like the movie. It was, <laughs> just drug on, drug on and on and on, and I was like, I know it. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I like this end. I'm like, I don't know. I like Hereditary way more. Just uh, <laughs> I don't watch Hereditary any day more. Well, I guess it's appropriate to. Uh end off this episode talking about a horror a horror movie you don't like so midsummer is a great way to end it off exactly. um to everybody watching you can follow brandon on instagram is at his whopper horror i will put the link to his account in the description so definitely go check him out and uh yeah thank you so much for your time hey you're welcome it was a great time for sure all right all right Oh, it's just hard to be to be the light You again, you again I know you're not that late